Welcome to Agoracom, the small cap epicenter in Agoracom TV, a daily, fast-paced, edgy show that brings you the best press releases out of the small cap world every morning at the open so you can hopefully profit from them and maybe even find your next great small cap investment. Now, it's Tuesday, February the 26th. I've got six great press releases for you from both sides of the border, but today the news is dominated by the resources sector, and today one of those anomalies specifically dominated by three and four Agoracom clients. I want to start you off first with Apple. African Gold Group. Disclosure, the next three companies are all Agoracom clients, but all this news stands on its own two feet. African Gold trades on the Venture Exchange under the stock symbol AGG. What do they announce? The discovery of a 2.7 kilogram, 2.7 kilogram gold nugget that's at that Kubota project in Mali. I did some quick math. 2.7 kilograms is 5.9 pounds, based on about $930 an ounce that gold is trading at right now. You talk about an 85, approximately. $85,000 gold nugget found just on one nugget there. What did they announce? Local artisan miners have discovered uh, the 2.7 kilogram gold nugget in the northwest quadrant of the Kubota concession. The press release does contain a link to view uh, the Kubota concession map and the location of the ma of the discovery. So definitely get to that press release on Agoracom or on your wire. Uh, a, re a review of the map clearly illustrates that the discovery location is a considerable distance from the site of any work undertaken by African Gold and speaks to the general prospective nature of the overall Kubata concession. The press release also contains a link to view a picture of the 2.7 kilogram nugget. Make sure you take a look at that. Uh, African Gold geologists describe the gold nugget as being local, as witnessed by its irregular shape and the ease with which the nugget fell apart when lifted for weighing. These factors are indicative of the nugget not having traveled very far from its point of origin. Uh, AGG Chairman Ben Adu had the following to say, Kobata shares a common characteristic of many established mining districts throughout the West African theater, that being, that being the presence of extensive local artisanal mining. Uh, uh, that's resulted in the world-class mining, just uh, world-class mining projects, and just to name a few: Sayama, Sadiola, and Siguri. The local population have been exploring and mining the Kobata region for hundreds of years, and can still find new resources within sight of old workings. African Gold trades on the venture under AGG. They closed yesterday at 99 cents, and as you can figure, uh, they focus on gold projects that are situation, situated along uh, significant gold trends within West Africa. Next up, Nora Resources, well known to everybody in this space, trades on the stock symbol NOT on the TSX Venture Exchange. Uh, they were halted yesterday at 1:10 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, and looks like they're going to resume trading this morning uh, at the open. But we'll get to that in a minute. What do they announce? The discovery of a second massive sulfide occurrence located two kilometers to the southwest of its Eagle One magnetic massive sulfide occurrence within Norant's 100% owned Double Eagle project. That's obviously at McFalls Lake. We don't have assays yet. They're talking about a detailed account of this new discovery will be press released shortly. What we do know, four holes have intersected massive uh, to semi-massive sulfide mineralization. What effect does that have on the market? Uh, halted yesterday at 110, resuming trading today at the open. I took a quick look at the bid ask uh, before we went to tape, and they closed at 504. Bid ask right now sitting at 575. Have to see if that's going to maintain itself, but very strong indication of the market's interest in this news. Uh, take a look at Norant Resources. Next up, Liberty Mines, a Gorecom client. Trades on the big board, Toronto Stock Exchange under LBE. What did they announce? They intersected 2.51% nickel over 10.4 meters at their hot pro at their hot project. Uh, the Hart project, sorry. Diamond drilling over at Hart continues to return high grade nickel intersections. Specifically here, hole 0866 is the one we just talked about. 2.51% nickel over 10 meters. The company is saying this intersection confirms the grade and width of the ore body within the previously stated strike length of 210 meters, which returned a high-grade zone of 2.05% nickel over 9.8 meters. Other boreholes in the vicinity intersected. 
2.15% nickel over 14 and a half meters, 1.19% nickel over 25 and a half meters, 1.15% nickel over just uh, 27.4 meters, and 1.37% nickel over 14.2 num- uh, meters. Big numbers there. Uh, William Randall, Liberty's VP of Exploration. Hart continues to deliver. This latest drill hole confirms the economic potential of the ore body, returning concentrations high enough to compensate for weaker nickel commodity prices should they occur. And as stated previously, the large sulfide pool is wide open to the east, west, and at depth. Liberty Mines is a producer right now of nickel. They're also focused on some exploration uh, projects, nickel, copper, cobalt, and platinum group metals from their properties in Ontario. They closed yesterday at $1.28. Uh, getting away from a gore com clients for a second but great news out of all of them congratulations let's go to orcana corp trades on the venture under aun they announced that they're moving to expand production and mine higher grades at la negra uh, they've approved capital expenditures for the purchase of additional mining and milling equipment to expand production at the 1000 per ton per day la negra silver lead zinc copper mine in mexico let's let's take a closer look at la negra because i like the numbers here it was acquired in 2006 the 1,000 ton per day uh, uh, mine uh, was uh, went from care and maintenance to current production levels in just 13 months. Annual operating cash flow at, at La Negra is estimated at 12 to 15 million dollars. Great numbers there if they can hit them. But it looks like they're producing 1,000 tons per day right now. About the company, or Canada says they're committed to becoming a mid-tier base metals, uh, base precious metals producer, generating 100 million dollars plus in annual operating cash flow. They closed yesterday at 75 cents. Moving to the U.S., uh, Gorecom client again, Patriot Scientific. PTSC on the OTC. Again, full disclosure, they are a client, but the news stands on its own. What did they announce? Mattel Inc., that's right, uh, Mattel Inc., the company we all grew up with, the famous toy and family products maker, has purchased a Moore microcessor patent portfolio license from the TPL Group. The TPL Group is Patriot's exclusive licensing partner. Mattel is a big company, obviously, employing 30,000 people in 43 countries, selling their products in 150 countries. There are, there are, there are no numbers attached to this press release. Patriot doesn't put out numbers with any of these press releases, but we do know that net income in 2007, $23.6 million. So obviously they're doing something right over there. The, uh, uh, Jim Turley, uh, Patriot's president CEO, had the following to say, the rate of licensing has accelerated in the last few months, and we're pleased to welcome Mattel to the group. Microchips are truly ubiquitous, and this latest signing just reinforces the point. Uh, something you should know about, 40 companies around the world have signed, have licensed the uh, uh, MMP portfolio technology, including Fujitsu, HP, Kenwood, Nokia, Philips, Sony, and Toshiba. And this morning, a lesser known company, but nonetheless, another license, Advanced Medical Optics. They're engaged in the manufacture and marketing of medical devices for the eye. They've also purchased uh, an MMP portfolio license. So great news out of Patriot, who closed yesterday at 38 cents. Ventech trades on the Venture Exchange under VSI. They announced their full year 2007 results. Great numbers here. Revenue, $90.8 million, up 57%. Earnings, $769,000. Well, what was really impressive about this number, that included stock option expenses of $739,000. So without that, they would have been about $1.5 million profit. The company's saying they don't expect this to happen again next year. So it's a quasi uh, non-recurring item. Translated into two cents per share in profit. What I also like, cash flow increased one, uh, to $1.8 million from operations. That compares to $1.1 million last year. You like to see the small caps spinning off cash. Very important so they don't have to keep dipping into, uh, into the markets for financing. They closed yesterday at $1.04. Finally, a couple stock calls to report to you. Two specifically for this morning, February 26th. Hathor Exploration trades on the venture under HAT. They're halted at 9-11, pending news. And Tiger Cat Energy trades also on the venture under TCE. They're halted at 9.09, also halted pending news. Take a look at those. You never know what the, what the news might be. That's a wrap for the day. A lot of news to, uh, to absorb, but fantastic news, especially out of the resources space. And congratulations to Patriot Scientific as well. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.